you notice we got some rain this morning. Oh, yeah. Hopefully we're going to get a lot more. Well, let us uh, pray. Heavenly Father, we gather here today under your care and protection. Thank you for your loving kindness that never fails us. We thank you for those with us that, we would, that you would guide our thoughts and our actions to bring your glory. Strengthen us and fill us with your peace. We pray all of this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Well, good morning. Won't you please stand? We're here to worship our great and sovereign God this morning. We welcome Sharon to our great team. Let's begin our worship time by singing, You are God alone. Sing to Him.
powerful and uplifting, wasn't it? Yeah. Our praise group continues to get better and better and better. Well, if you open up your bulletins, we'll cover there this morning. There's a number of things that we want to talk about this morning. But first, we have a video followed by some remarks by Barb on VBS. Hey, Tom and Annie, the Skid Guys here, inviting you to be a part of VBS. That's right, Vicious Bible Stories. No, 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 no. Oh, there's vicious stuff in there. Do you know what happened to John and Baptist? I do, but however, we're not talking about that. We are talking about VBS, Vacation Bible School. Oh, that's something completely different. Yes. And what we want to encourage you to do is to make plans and to mark your calendar to be a part of VBS. Vacation Bible School. Hang on, hang on. You keep saying vacation and school at the same time. Those are not the same thing. Well, school can be a vacation. Do you listen to the words that come out of your mouth? No. But VBS is fun, like a vacation, and children go to VBS to learn and to get excited about God's Word, kind of like school, thus Vacation Bible School. Okay, well then, then call it like, um, uh, call it uh, fun, inspirational, uh, neato, kind of school. Hmm? F-I-N-K-S. That's right. Thinks. He wants to call it Thinks. You want us just to obliterate uh, the acronym BBS and just start a whole new thing called Thinks? Hey kids, in the summer, let's be a part of Finks. Who wants to be a part of Finks? What's Finks? Well, it's Finks. It's where we learn about the Bible. Finks. No, I think we'll just stick with Vacation Bible School. So make plans to be a part of Vacation Bible School and watch your kids have a great time as they learn about this amazing God and His fantastic Word. Yeah, I think everyone will love it. Okay, stop it. I don't think you're my boss. Cue the title card, please. What is that? Something Finks. All right, it's enough. All right. Oh, I'm going to come up here so everybody can, I can see everyone. Um, so, I just, oh. Um, real quick, I just want to say, in case you didn't notice the elephant in the room, this is the Tom and now this year George project. The kids are going to be underwater. We're going to cover that, and it'll look like they're underwater because our theme is scuba, where they're diving into a friendship with God, right? So um, we're really excited. It starts tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. from 9 to noon every day. Um, if you are a VBS volunteer... Um, we need you here. Staff devotions start at 8.30, so you need to be here a little bit beforehand to be down in the kitchen area at 8.30. Um, we put out last week a registration online, and we already have 11 kids registered for VBS, none of which are the regular, like, that's not including the Perrys, which will bump it a lot, you know? So that's not our regular crowd kids. So we're already at 11. Um, we planned for 40, knowing God is big, and we may supersede that yet. So it's awesome, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, our mission this year is the Home of Hope Orphanage that Joanne is involved with. We are doing back to school for them. So we are collecting money for back to school supplies. They're estimating like $250 in school supplies and backpacks. Another um, $250 for the curriculum and $70 a month for the tutor because um, the school they send them to, the kids aren't learning. So they're going to try to do it at home. So they're getting a tutor and that's $70 a month. So we would love to um, collect enough money to pay for the supplies, the curriculum, and the tutor for a year. So our goal this year at VBS for our mission is $1,500. So we're going to run that all week at VBS, and then the next Sunday we will have it here. If any of you want to give towards that cause, it will all go towards um, the Home of Hope Orphanage there. Yes? And can you tell us where the Home of Hope is? It's in Zimbabwe. Yes, in um, a town that I could maybe spell, but I don't know about saying. So it's just in Zimbabwe. It's where Joanne Roop has been going, and we're teaming up to get them the school supplies and the education they need for the year. Barb, so, 
Does that mean we make uh, a note on the memo section of the check or put it in separate envelopes? Or um, yes, you put on the check. If you're writing a check, you put on the memo line, um, Home of Hope. VBS, just VBS mission is fine. And we will make sure it gets to the right place. Thanks for asking that. <laughs> All right, I think that's it. Thank you, Barb. Well, if you pull out your books, we'll run uh, over the different things uh, rather quickly. As you see, Wednesday at 6.30 here in church, we have a Bible study. But it changed. It's not over here in the, in the uh, companion room. It's downstairs in the basement because of VBS. Um, and then, of course, Saturday, uh, we have uh, baptism at 2 p.m. at the uh, Glacier Creek off, off Styler Road. So, please attend that. Hopefully, it will be cool and not hot. Go. Sorry, I forgot. It was on my notes, and I didn't read it. But if you are a worker and you didn't get your T-shirt, I have them. So, see me afterwards. Thank you, Barb, and I really appreciate you taking the time to explain the structure to me because when I walked in, I thought we had another building project. Sunday, there will be Gary Schooning and his band One Source here playing uh, special music, so come and enjoy that too. Okay, so now we get to birthdays. It's also a, a good time that we, we uh, enjoy each, uh, each Sunday. Julie Wolf, I don't think she's here. 
Uh, Erica is here. Erica Ward. Share with the, everybody here. I'm 37. Yay. And Sherry Donovan. Don't believe they're here. Uh, Ken Rosedale, I don't believe, is here either. But at any rate, we're going to sing Happy Birthday, and if you get to see any of them, wish them a happy birthday. saving us the front row and worked out really well this morning for us. <laughs> so we have Natalia, our daughter, and James, our husband, who's just uh, gotten back from a deployment in Germany. So they're celebrating their anniversary with us this week, which is great. And they're two beautiful kids, Jonathan and Kira. Pastor Adam from Rochester, Minnesota. It's my wife, Molly. Grace, Daisy, Titus, Olivia, Malachi, Zeke. Thanks for having us. Well, praise and prayer time. And for those of you who are new, this is a time where you can offer up anything that is of concern to you, or even praise that uh, experiences that you may have had that are very positive. Oh, Patricia. Caught me off guard there. Friday morning, I was texting with my grandson, Deputy Trueblood, and they were going to come down Saturday and pick up Hay, and he's law enforcement in Flathead County, and usually they all help each other out. And I said, how many guys do you have coming to help you? And he said, Grandma, it's just Jenny and I. She'll drive, and I will pick up the Hay. And they have a six-week-old baby and a two-year-old. So I immediately texted Carolyn and said, help, we, Nathan needs help. 
And I would like the 20 men who showed up yesterday morning to pick up hay. It didn't turn out to be 100. It was 150. And they just kept coming and coming. And I want you to stand up because I want to salute you guys for what you did to help yesterday. Would you stand up if you were out there tossing bales of hay in the heat? Thank you so much. It doesn't get any better than this church. I don't see 20 here uh, present this morning, but there were a lot of community people that came too. So it made it a lot better, didn't it? Because it was hot and getting hotter. So we get done quickly. But that's what we do in this church. We help each other. Well, for devotional this morning, I chose a sub. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, praise and prayer. We need to move on. There's more. Um, anyone else have any any prayers, any praises? I have a whole list. Uh, Scott and Lori Crane, as all of you know, or most of you know, Scott endured a very difficult operation. And I guess just recently he has shown positive um, reaction in terms of pain. He was under terrible pain, and of course we've been praying for him for weeks and weeks. And maybe he has finally turned the corner. He is home and apparently doing quite a bit better. Um, another is um, Beulah Har Harmon, and I don't know the condition there. One, no? Oh, okay. Yeah, I guess it is Butch. Okay. He's, he's still in rehab in Missoula. He fell off of his bicycle, uh, oh, apparently yeah, blacked right. out. Or that's whatever. right. But we've been praying for him for the last couple of weeks. And, of course, uh, we, we have been praying for rain. And, of course, the Lord answered us here today. More to come, hopefully. Um the war between Israel and, and uh, yeah, Iran and Hezbollah and all of them, uh, we certainly want to pray for peace there and a, an end to hostilities. And we also want to pray for VBS, for a very successful program this year, which I'm sure that we will have under Barb's reign. As all of you know, she spends a great deal of time putting this program together and I think maybe a round of applause is important here for her. Uh, Thurman Burgess, I, I know you wanted to talk a little bit about that, Nathan. He's home out of rehab, doing much better. Uh, he said he finally got movement in his thumb, but he still doesn't have it in his hand. Uh, he also suffered a stroke. and and. I'm sure you have Vern Fox there on that, too. I do, yes. And he is home and, and still going through a lot of therapy, but long road ahead for those people. Getting old is not fun. And, of course, the last one I have is relief from these wildfires. As you know, we're fortunate here. We only have one that's local. That's right back at Holland Peak. But there are fires west of us and north of us, and... Those, many of them seem to be almost out of control. So they need rain, too, cooler weather, and maybe some relief for the firefighters as well. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Oh, I pray. oh sorry. <laughs> oh, praise to God. Hey, uh, thank you. Uh, I want to welcome our visitors to, uh, to church, because anytime we travel, we, we go to church, and just the welcoming... Just the welcoming of, uh, you know, uh, people in church is just really something great. And, and I'd like to salute the, uh, the gentleman that uh, is uh, a serviceman. And anybody who's served in the military, I, I really thank you for uh, the freedom that we, we have. And, yeah, that, that's a salvation. Yeah. Um, and I just uh, really wanted to uh, give praise to God for uh, <laughs> us getting the occupancy uh, thing for our cabin. And we moved in yesterday, 
and uh, had dinner and breakfast. <laughs> we were excited. Small things like that excite me. And, uh, you know, we, uh, we were at Lonnie's house uh, last night, and just the fellowship of, of people, you know, just, you know, when we were singing praises, you know how in the Bible, the, uh, Jesus says that he, you know, my people know my voice, and when we were singing, I could hear Dennis. I could hear other people that were singing, you know, and it's really good, you know, to, when we go to heaven, they say that there's going to be a lot of singing, but I hope it's not all singing, you know, <laughs> I hope there's uh, going to be a lot of other stuff going on, which uh, I really do. Let's see. Anything else? I guess uh, waking up in the morning with our eyelids open is, is a praise. I, yeah. <laughs> okay, you can get up now. <laughs> if you don't know, Chris's father was a pastor, and that's where he gets this. <laughs> well, is there any other praises or prayers? I've got the mic. Um, <laughs> I just, I just want to say that it is so very much not just me. We have a spectacular VBS team that have been together for probably seven years now, and it works very well in spite of their director most times. So I just wanted to say that, but I wanted to ask for a specific prayer for the VBS workers for, um, just the, you know, by the end of the week, we get very exhausted. So pray each day for physical strength, but, um, just pray that, we can shine that light and just um, pray that the hearts of these kids are moved even now where they are. Um, I just got back from fourth and fifth grade camp and you think fourth and fifth graders, what do they have? But there's a lot of stuff in this world and these kids deal with a lot of stuff. And if we can just show them the love of Christ for a week, that's, that's the success. Um, that's what matters. It's not the numbers. It's not the 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 program anything it's showing these kids the love of christ so um just pray that that is what is first and foremost here any others okay let us go to the lord in prayer heavenly father there are many petitions that were brought forward this morning and there may be others as well that were unspoken we asked it that you move on all of these issues and, and as your will provides uh, to, to improve the situation for any of the concerns and for those praises, we thank you for them as well. For those who are sick, we ask that you place your hand on them and heal them and bring them back to their, their most normal state. We ask that, that you also, for those that may be near death, that you also move them to the point where they are a true believer and that they are accepted into your, into your heaven and, and keep them under your, under your care. We ask that you bless the workers and others that are involved in VBS to make it a very successful program, one that inspires these young kids that in many cases are not ever exposed to the Lord except through VBS one time per year. We ask that perhaps that will move their parents to become involved in this church or in another church, but at any rate to experience the love that you provide. We ask that there be continued prayers, especially for Scott and Lori, for Thurman Burgess, for Vern Fox, for Butch Harmon, and for others that may not have been mentioned this morning. We thank you for the rain that you have provided and that you will provide, especially in this time of the year. We also ask that in whatever measure you can provide that the war in Israel inspired by Iran and its proxies, that you bring that war to end and stop the, the killing that is going on in the Middle East. We also ask that any other prayers that may be not mentioned this morning but are very important, that you also address them. We ask all these things in your name. Amen. Before this morning, 
for devotional, I chose a subject that, that many of us are familiar with, but perhaps it is important that, that we also spend time on it, because Bruce talks about this a lot, and that is, how do we mature as a Christian? What do we have to do in our lives to make us a more inspired Christian and a believer in God? But before we do this, let us go to, to the Lord in prayer. Holy Father, magnify the Holy Spirit in each of us. Let the Holy Spirit speak to each of us about Jesus and his work. Help us to transform into evangelists to spread the word of Christ to others. Guide us as we do our work to grow the kingdom of God. In his name we pray, amen. There's quite a bit of, of biblical text that dwells on the subject of what is a Christian. What makes a Christian? What causes a, a Christian to be a better individual for the word of God? The most important is to, to mature by focusing on the Word. Each of us should spend time every day in our Bibles, reading something there to grow as a Christian. It's important that we spend time in the Word because the Word, each time we read it, we grow in our understanding. So spending time in the Bible helps us to get a greater grasp of what Jesus and what God are trying to teach us. It's very, very important that we do this. The second step, and oh, by the way, that is referred to in Ephesians 4.15. We want to mature with love. As you continue to read the Bible and we begin to act on what we've learned, we begin to approach different situations with more wisdom. As a result, we begin a deeper spiritual walk. It changes us and our approach to others. The fruit of the Spirit, that is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control become more distinctive in each of us. As we become more prevalent in these characteristics, we become less prevalent in those worldly responses such as jealousy, strife, and greed. 1 Corinthians 3, 1-3. We mature as a body. We live in a materialistic world. But the body of Christ does not work that way. It is necessary that you begin or you belong to a body of believers such as this church. We certainly become more mature as an individual, but true maturely, maturity comes when we interact with other believers or other individuals that we're trying to inspire, Romans 15, 1 to 7. We decide to mature. It's an individual choice, obviously. Each one of us has the right to, to choose whether we want to or not, but hopefully, once we get a taste of what it is like to be reverent with Jesus, we become more and more close to him. The Apostle Paul spoke of his own spiritual regrowth when he said, When I was a child, I spoke and thought and reasoned as a child. But when I grew up, I put away childish things. 1 Corinthians 13, 11. Maturity is a decision that if you want to pursue the things of God, grow your faith and walk in a way that is worthy of Jesus' sacrifice and not of your own personal gain, but for him. In other words, we should honor him and all of our actions should be for him and not for ourselves. We will mature as, a, as an individual and we will inspire other people. We will make mistakes, but God isn't looking for perfection. He's just looking for us to be closer to him, to be more like him. And that is our goal as our life proceeds to become more and more like Jesus. Remember, the Lord our God is our safety and our shield. He gives us grace and glory. The Lord will withhold no good things from those who believe. The greater our beliefs, the greater the good that he provides for us. Psalm 84, 11. If we do what God desires and we follow him with our whole heart and live in a way that inspires him and honors him, 
we will increasingly become a mature Christian and the Lord will rise in us and we will see his glory. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray that your kingdom will grow as we also grow and mature as Christians. There are so many others who do not know you. Help us as we mature to reach them and help them become better Christians. In this way, more people will gain a greater understanding and love for you as our Savior. We pray all of this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please rise as you are able and join me in singing hymn 363, To God Be the Glory. see everyone here. I especially want to welcome our visitors. We're so glad to have you here with us today. And so I want to welcome those two that will be watching this later this week on YouTube. We're glad you could join us in that manner. Uh, I want to, <clears throat> Bonnie already brought it up, but I want to make a point. The baptism that we're having uh, this year is on Saturday. We normally do it on Sunday after, after church, but scheduling is such we needed to do it on a Saturday this year. And I really want to stress the importance of as many people as possible being there. This is really a joyous time. It's a special time. The way we go about it, I'm kind of prejudiced, but I happen to really like it. Just being on a beautiful clear water stream here in Montana with uh, God's creation around us, that's really a special time. So 
we'll send you a reminder, but we encourage you to be there. The praise group, are we going to step into the water Saturday? Are we going to do that? We doing that, Leon? Is that a thumbs up? Or? <laughs> Did we just now decide to do that? <laughs> Well, you'll see about it. Okay. All right. No pressure. Yeah. Okay. We're going to continue our service now by taking an offering. And I'd ask the ushers if they would to come forward at this time and do that for us. Uh, Bill Shoop. Lonnie, can you help me? Take your pick. Okay. Because I didn't see them earlier. I don't know. This morning my mind's been everywhere. I have to confess it's been shooting all over the place. I had a, a lady tell me a couple days ago that there's 85,000 kids dis, disappeared as they come across the south border unaccounted for. So that's been on my mind in prayer. And then watching this gentleman here with the little one, I can remember how many times uh, my children went to sleep in my arms <clears throat> after a hard day's work. So my mind's been everywhere besides focusing, I guess. I'll try to pray. <clears throat> Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time that we can come together as a fellowship and worship you from our hearts. Lord, we thank you for all the blessed rain that you've given us in this hot period of time without any thunder and lightning. And Lord, we know that you've blessed us so dearly here. And Lord, we know that you've blessed us with our possessions and, and the things that you've given us. And Lord, we thank you for this time that we could give a portion of it back. And we ask that you bless what we give and that we use it for your work and beyond. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, we're going to continue in 1 Corinthians today, <clears throat> and today we're going to finish chapter 10, and we're going to do so by looking at verses 22 through 33. And as we've gone through this chapter, those of you that have been here, you know Paul has been talking about idolatry, and he's talking about the, just how subtle idolatry can be, and 
for those of you that maybe haven't gone through the whole thing, I try to remind folks all the time, we're not, in this day and age, we're not necessarily talking about bowing down to something chiseled down of stone, carved down of wood, but a real simple um, definition of idolatry in this day and age is anything, even necessarily something that's not bad, doesn't have to be bad, but anything that replaces God from the rightful place in our heart as number one in our heart, that for us becomes an idol. So he's going to continue to talk about that today. He's going to start off by telling us that this idolatry awakens the jealousy of God. And he begins by asking an interesting question. He basically says, are we stronger than God? This is directed at those of us who would consider ourselves mature Christians, who would consider ourselves to be strong Christians. But perhaps when we get into that mindset, we foolishly get this idea that perhaps we can brush up against sin, that we can just play around the edges and not be harmed. Paul is saying, you may be stronger than your weaker brother, but you are not stronger than God. And it is dangerous to play with sin and to tempt God. So 1 Corinthians chapter 10, and I want to start off just reading verse 22. But as always, before we go to scripture, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, I do lift this time up to you. Again, it's always my earnest prayer that you would just set me aside and speak through me. I pray, Father, that through your Holy Spirit, you would make these verses just come to life for us, Father, that you would give us understanding. And I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Verse 22, or do we provoke the Lord to jealousy? We are not stronger than he, are we? You know, those of you that are Old Testament scholars, you know there's many places in the Old Testament that refer to God as a jealous God. So we ask ourselves, what does the Bible mean? What are they telling us when they describe God as jealous? Is God like us? Is he subject to capricious anger and green-eyed envy? Well, certainly not. The jealousy of God is a holy and a proper jealousy. It is a love for his children, you and I, that is so intense that he becomes angry if anything threatens that love. If you are genuinely a child of God, he loves you far too much to let you drift into idolatry, and he will strike at it. If your affections for the things of this world start to supersede your love for God, then he will do what he must to pull us back to him. Look at verses 23 and 24. All things are lawful, but not all things are profitable. All things are lawful, but not all things edify. Let no one seek his own good, but that of his neighbor. When I read this verse, I think of Cain in the Old Testament. And in Genesis, you remember what he told the Lord in Genesis 4, 9? He said, am I my brother's keeper? Well, yes, as a matter of fact, we are. We are our brother and we are our sister's keepers. We have a responsibility not to harm the spiritual well-being of our brothers and sisters in Christ. When we find ourselves wanting something, wanting anything so much that it interferes not only with our love for God, but our love for others, we awaken God's jealousy and we expose ourselves to his discipline. And also, somewhat along the same lines, but talking about our relationship with non-believers, while we need to be aware of the spiritual dangers that certainly exist in this world, we are not to cut ourselves off from non-Christian folks. Jesus told us in John 17 that we are to be in the world without being of the world. Some Christians would, <clears throat> they'd like to build a cozy little Bible city with a wall around it and do their best to keep the pressures and temptations from the outside world. I'll be honest, there are times I love that. Being here in fellowship with you folks, I love it. 
And we're going to experience that one day in heaven. But right now, God put us in this world to be his witness. And the problem with the situation we're in right now is that when we try to seal ourselves off from the outside world, we find that the outside world is already in the church. It's a different form of worldness that can take hold. The sin of smug, self-righteous pride. God wants us to have non-Christian friends so that we can be a witness and we can be an influence on their life. That being true, we ask, well, how can we keep ourselves from the lure of idolatry? We must keep our love for the Lord Jesus first and foremost in our lives so that we're safe even while we're in this fallen and sinful world. Now, Paul's going to turn to some practical guidelines in these next verses that are, should enable us to live in the world without being tempted by worldly, worldly idolatry. Verse uh, 25 and 26. Eat anything that is sold in the meat market without asking questions for conscience sake. For the earth is the Lord and all it contains. In other words, don't run away from life. Live in the midst of it. Don't try to avoid being a normal person enjoying the normal benefits of life. God has given us great things to enjoy. So enjoy them. Just make sure that you don't let any of these things that you enjoy so much displace your love for God. Look at verse 27. If one of the unbelievers invites you and you want to go, eat anything that is set before you without asking questions of conscience sake. We need to really pay attention to what Paul says here in this short verse. This is how we are to live our Christian lives. Not only should we not isolate ourselves from non-believers, but Paul tells us to live in such a way that non-believing folks will invite us to their home and invite us to break bread. This is an opportunity, folks, to be God's witnesses. While our fellowship is with Christ, we can still show friendship to the non-believers around us. Paul says, if someone invites you over to eat, then go. He also, I would say, it's implied that if you're a self-righteous, legalistic stick in the mud, don't worry, you're not going to get invited every, anywhere. <laughs> and consequently, you'll have no witness for Christ and you'll have no impact on the world. But if you are an outgoing Christian who accepts and cares for struggling and needy people, you'll have many invitations. And God will bless your ministry as you are in the world, but not of it. Verses 28 through 30. But if anyone says to you, this meat, this is meat sacrificed to idols, do not eat it for the sake of the one who informed you and for conscience sake. I mean, not your own conscience, but the other man's. For why is my freedom judged by another's conscience? If I partake with thankfulness, why am I slandered concerning that for which I give thanks? If someone invites you over, and we probably won't run into this exact example, but it applies in other events, other examples. If someone invites you over and they make an issue, of a matter of meat sacrificed to idols, then Paul is saying, don't let yourself be drawn into a controversy. After all, why would someone invite you over, put meat on your plate, and then say, by the way, this meat was sacrificed to idols? Obviously, this person is testing you, either to prove that Christians are not willing to stand by their principles or to provoke you into an argument. Don't get drawn into contrived conflicts. Don't give non-Christians reason to judge your conscience. I, again, you probably, you're probably not going to go to a meal at a non-believer's home and when they set the 
main course in front of you say this meat was sacrificed to idols. You're probably not going to run into that. One experience I've had in my life that I, I have actually experienced a few times, you'll run into people that just want to argue with you. They are non-believers and they just want to have an argument. They want to try to show you how knowledgeable they are about things. And one of the bigger ones that I've ever ran into is the argument of macro evolution versus creation. Now I'm going to tell you something that I try to do. I don't come right out and tell the people that they're not informed enough to have that argument. I would like to say that. But the Bible tells us that if you're not a believer, what we read in the Bible is foolishness to them. So why would you argue with somebody about something that is to them honestly foolish? When I get to that point, rather than having this debate about how this universe started, I say, let's talk about God. If I can get them to a point where they can at least acknowledge the possibility that there's a God, then we can start talking about these other things. You see that? Be careful that you don't get drawn into something that is just contrived on their part and you're just going to waste your breath talking to them about it. So, anyway, let's... Um, I completely lost my place, but I'll, I'll find it. Give me a minute here. Let's go to verse 31 through 33. Because here Paul kind of gives us a, a rule of thumb for all occasions. Whether then you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Give no reason either to Jews or to Greeks. And by the way, I'm going to use this word Greek. Read Gentile. Okay, let's just think Gentile or to the church of God. Just as I also please all men in all things, not seeking my own profit, but the profit of many, so that they may be saved. You know, folks, these words of Paul and Paul's life, centuries later, continue to transform the lives and change history. And we ask why? Well, it's because Paul lived a totally focused life. He had a goal in life and he wanted to accomplish it. He focused his energies on reaching that goal. He had the highest motives for everything he did, even eating and drinking. He lived his entire life for the glory of God. He avoided doing anything that would deliberately offend anyone because he wanted to win as many as he possibly could to a relationship with Jesus Christ. Now, let's acknowledge, folks, sometimes, sometimes it is not possible not to offend people because the gospel, the cross of Christ, they are very offensive to a lot of folks. But if people are going to be offended, my argument would be let them be offended only by the truth of the gospel. I don't want it to be because of my smug condensation are my legalistic spirit, spirit. As much as possible, we need to make every effort not to offend needlessly, and certainly not to offend our brothers and sisters in Christ. Sometimes, in order not to offend others, we have to swallow some of our pride. We have to give up some of our rights. We have to put up with some discomfort. But Paul tells us, we should not mind sacrificing some of those rights and some of those comforts if, in doing so, we will have a greater influence among those who do not know Jesus Christ. It's all a matter of keeping our eyes on the goal of Christian life. You know, <clears throat> Paul has hit us very hard. If you've been here, you know these last few Sundays and in this chapter, he's hit us very hard with the dangers and the subtleties of idolatry. And today's message is going to be the last on that subject, at least for a while. We close out chapter 10 and we move to chapter 11. So I wanted to share with you some thoughts that uh, on this subject of idolatry that I came across in my, just my normal reading this week. And they're from a gentleman that at one time was president of Moody Bible Institute, and he writes this. Periodically, it is important to stop long enough to measure where we are in life and to assess the true significance 
of what we are devoting our time and attention to. I find myself wanting to reduce the regrets of life and to envision myself standing before our Lord with as much as possible in my hands for Him. While we often think of regrets in terms of sinful things, it's important to remember that many regrets will be directly attributable simply to things that, while good, were not of lasting value. At the end of life, we'll want to be sure that the inevitable regrets of greed don't haunt our memory. Greed offers us nothing more than an empty shell of things that do not last and cannot satisfy. We need to keep our self-centeredness in check because preoccupation with our own advancement, with our own importance, will absolutely, will absolutely evaporate in the all-consuming celebration of His preeminence and His presence on the other side. If we're not careful, life can be poured into a bottomless bucket of all this world offers. And again, after all is said and done, the bucket is still empty. Imagine stepping onto the shore on the other side and realizing that we have brought nothing with us of eternal value. Think of looking into the face of our eternal God and realizing that our lives reflect only the wood, hay, and straw of earthside stuff and little or none of and for the kingdom. Living with eternity as the driving force of our decisions and our desires is key. While it's easy to think life now and heaven later, authentic followers see all of life in the long view and do all that they do here in light of there. Make the switch and refuse to sacrifice the permanent on the altar of the temporary. And in case you think that you just might become so heavenly minded that you are no earthly good, think again. You will be amazed at how much earthly good you can do when heaven is on your mind. It all begins with surrendering our life to Jesus Christ. It all begins by saying this prayer, acknowledging that we are sinners and acknowledging that we need a Savior and giving our life to Him, accepting His free gift of salvation. I hope you've done that. If you haven't and you feel that God is calling you to that today, I'd certainly be glad to talk to you. Continue to pray for revival. Boy, we need it, don't we? We need it. Pray that it can begin right here in this church. It's got to start somewhere. If you have picked an individual, a family, or group to pray for, please continue to do that. Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this body of believers. I thank you for the love that they demonstrate for you and everything that they do in their homes and in this community, things that are done for each other, things that are done for our non-believing friends and neighbors, Father. And I pray that... I just pray that their drive, their desire for all of that would just continue to grow, Father, and that you would bless each and every person that's here today. And I pray this all in Jesus' name. Amen.